Gnostic Media Podcast number two with your host, Jan Irvin. Today I have a very special guest here with me, Professor John Rush, uh, who is Professor of Anthropology at Sierra College in Rockland, California. He teaches magic, witchcraft, religion, physical anthropology, and uh, physical anthropology lab. He is a neuropathic doctor and medical hypnotherapist in private practice. He teaches a few specialty areas, including human con- communications, systems theory, symbolism, cults, and he in- he even participated in a cult for three years. And uh, he's a uh, expert in tattooing and scarification, herbs, both medicinal and hallucinogens, clinical anthropology, and the use of anthropological concepts and models in clinical settings. Professor Rush is the author of at least seven books, including Stress and Emotional Health in 1999, Spiritual Tattoo in 2005, The Twelve Gates in 2007, and uh, just released today, his book Failed God, Fractured Myth in a Fragile, Fragile World, which uh, I'm excited to have him on, and uh, welcome aboard, John. Well, thank you very much. That's a wonderful introduction. I hope I can live up to all that. Well, I'm I'm sure you'll be just fine. So tell us uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get involved in the in this field of study or these fields of study? Well, okay, I was alerted to uh, hallucinogens certainly as a graduate student. There's a great deal of information within the anthropological literature. It's sort of stuck away in journals and uh, requires time and energy to go into the libraries, as you know, as a researcher uh, uh, going in and digging this stuff out. I also had the opportunity as a graduate student to uh, make friends with a Catholic priest who was also studying anthropology at the time, and he told me a lot of things I didn't quite understand at the time, but uh, in uh, 1970 it started to make some sense with uh, John Allegro's book, uh, The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross. Now, uh, in 1970, I don't exactly know what I knew, but I certainly didn't know enough to write anything about this, but I, you know, kept my eyes and ears open. And as time went on, I began to collect more and more information in the, uh, <clears throat> in the aspect of hallucinogens and uh, religion. Uh, in the Hindu tradition, for example, uh, <clears throat> my studies in, uh, in ancient Egypt tend to reveal similar things that I was finding in the Hindu tradition as well, although in the, in the ancient Egyptian tradition, uh, a lot of things they didn't write about. They didn't write about how to embalm a body, for example, but we know how to embalm a cow, and the reason for that <clears throat> is that uh, people were dying every day, and they didn't need to write it down. They had the information. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got allergies here today. Um, and, but they did write down about the sacred cow because they only embalmed a cow once every 20 years, and if the people died in the meantime, they would lose the uh, information they needed to do that. Uh, they didn't write a, write a lot about, uh, at least openly, about the use of hallucinogens. Uh, however, in their anointing oils, uh, the round, the uh, Osiris uh, round, the cycle round of Osiris, uh, we start to see uh, at least uh, bits and pieces of uh, Osiris actually being the mushroom itself. And I wrote about this in the in the twelve books. Now, this really came home to me in two thousand and one. Twelve gates, you mean? My wife, pardon me. Twelve, the twelve, the 12 gates, gates. You mean? Oh, you yeah. said the twelve books. Okay. Oh, the twelve gates. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, this really came home to me in two thousand and one. Uh, my wife and I went to Europe uh, specifically to look at the symbolisms in the basilicas and the cathedrals. I didn't exactly know what I was going to find. Um, Leaving Rome, uh, we had a couple of pictures. We were able to get close enough to some mosaics that were uh, rather suggestive of, uh, of mushrooms. I'm not sure exactly what type they were, but they appeared to be mushrooms. But it really came home when we walked into uh, St. Mark's uh, Basilica in Venice. Um, it, now, St. Mark's is, a, is an operating cathedral. It's in operation. 
uh, but it's also a tourist uh, area, and they kind of lead people through like cattle. And uh, if you delay too long and look too long at some of the mosaics, you get people running out from the the arches telling you to move along and so on and so forth. Well, this happened one too many times with us, and uh, my wife got a little bit suspicious, and so we backtracked. And lo and behold, right there was uh, Jesus, and this is on the cover of the Failed God book. There was Jesus with the Anamita muscaria mushroom in his hand, surrounded by what appeared to be psilocybin-type mushrooms. Now, when I described this image in my book, I didn't get into a lot of detail because I didn't want to get into a lot of discussions about Adam and Eve and all that business. So I mentioned, you know, male and female that were by the feet of, of Jesus. And... Uh, as you look at the picture, you see uh, Jesus with a mushroom in his hand, and in his left hand, and with his forefinger, he's pointing to his right hand, the hole in his right hand, and then his forefinger in his right hand is pointing to himself. Now, pointing in Christian art is very, very important, as you know, because it tells the, the viewer what to look at and what's significant. And so in that one picture alone, it's telling you that Jesus was the mushroom. Jesus was an experience. He was not a real, live, living human being, as far as I can determine. There's no evidence for him. There's no historical visibility. In fact, they had to invent that. Uh, Eusebius was one of the uh, instigators of that, probably under pressure from uh, Constantine to do this, probably threat of po torture or whatever. I'm not sure what, what really went on there. At any rate, when we got back to California and started looking at the uh, photos we'd taken uh, uh, close up and personal, and again, the average person wouldn't have been able to see these things. You can't walk up to these mosaics in these sacred spaces and start looking at them without uh, having somebody run out and tell you, you know, what are you doing? You can't bring a ladder into these places uh, to get up to see these things. But with a, a good camera, you can take the pictures and look at them. Now, with manuscripts, it's the same thing. Manuscripts were... Uh, usually for the elite, and they could control the, the uh, images there because the average person wouldn't have access to that. So they could keep this under wraps, but no more. Uh, to date, I have collected on the neighborhood, in the neighborhood of about 700 pieces of uh, Christian art, and all of them have the mushroom in it in one form or another. Some are very obvious. Some of the earlier images, for example, from Ravenna, uh, if you can get a, a picture of uh, in the Ravenna Cathedral or the Basilica there, the main uh, uh, the main building that you go into, it's kind of hard to see this uh, from where the pews are and so on. But up in the top, uh, there is uh, at the top of this cupola, uh, there is a mushroom. Underneath them, and it's obvious that it's a mushroom. It's not uh, stylized or anything. It's a mushroom. It's inverted. It's upside down. Underneath that is the hand of God coming down from that. And then on either side of this hand, uh, we have Moses and Elijah. And in their uh, uh, stoles, that uh, piece of cloth that flows back, in both of those there are mushrooms and so on and so forth. Um, it's very obvious uh, what this is. The, the saint is communing with, in this case, uh, Apollinarius. Uh, he is communing with the deity uh, using the mushroom. And it was the saints who were worshipped uh, during this time period. There's, there's, abs there's no pictures of Jesus or anything up until, uh, uh, at least until the time of around Constantine or even maybe, maybe a little bit later than that. And the reason for this is that Jesus wasn't experienced. He wasn't a real, uh, a real human being. And this is the big argument that they get into about the Trinity and uh, whether Jesus was all spirit and all human or whatever it is. And this all comes about uh, as these different Christianities that developed back in that time had different uh, ideas as to what Jesus was. Um, at any rate, that's kind of a brief introduction as to where I got involved in this anyway. Well, that sounds like a uh, fantastic introduction.